Using SMS, MMS, text messages as daily means of communication during the pandemic to alleviate anxiety, depression, and strengthen social relationships and well-being. Importance of communication and socialization on human beings' social and psychological well-being. Humans are social beings. After a human is born, they are automatically introduced into social groups. They live their whole lives as part of a society. The social aspect cannot be easily removed from the essence of an individual. Social contact affects our health, and so does social isolation. Communication is so important that we've developed a plethora of tools to help us achieve that, including pen and paper, telegraph, telephone, and the internet, according to the 2018. Effects of social isolation. According to Emerson and Montez, captors use social isolation to torture prisoners of war drastic effects. Social isolation of healthy, well-functioning individuals results in psychological and physical disintegration and even death. Social scientists concluded studies of individuals who are more socially connected are healthier and live longer than their more isolated peers. The article entitled Social Relationships and Health a flashpoint of health policy concluded social isolation had these effects on individuals. First, social relationships have significant effects on health, and social relationships affect health through behavioral, psychosocial, and physiological pathways, and relationships have costs and benefits for health. Relationships shape health outcomes throughout the life course and have a cumulative impact on health over time. And lastly, the cost and benefit of social relationships are not distributed equally in the population. According to the article You OK, text messages can suit the disconnected soul. Text messaging, SMS, has been given a bad reputation for contributing to high-risk behavior like reckless driving and illiteracy. A social welfare professor at the University of California, Berkeley, however, found an advantage, especially for people who feel stressed out, isolated, and alone, and it is called texting. A clinical psychologist named Adrian Aguilera said his patients who were many low-income Latinos suffering from depression other mental disorders reported feeling more cared for and connected when they received text messages asking them to track their moods, reflect on positive interactions, and take their prescribed medications, according to University of California Berkeley 2012. So we can see here that text messaging has a advantage and that it helps the well-being of an individual. So here, this is just a slide to show you the SMS text messaging statistics. 63% of the global population uses and sends SMS. I'll go into more detail in a second. 80% of the total population in North America use text messages. 89% of Russia, which is the highest mobile user, send and receive text messages. China and India are the leading sending countries using SMS. The mobile industry had a revenue of 1.5 trillion in 2017. 57 of mobile users own a smartphone. This slide shows you that 5 billion people globally send and receive SMS messages. That's about 65% of the world's population. And this slide just shows that 292 million people in North America use text messages. That's 80% of the total population. 
Now here, this slide shows that the country with the highest percentage of mobile user is Russia, where 89% of the population sends and receives text messages. And here you see that the mobile industry had a revenue of 1.05 trillion in 2017, and that's 1.64% annual increase. China and India have the most people who send SMS messages. China comes in first with 1,081 million people and India second with 730 million. So China is first place and India is second place as worldwide text users. Here's just a slide to show you how many people access the internet via the mobile phone. So 3.3 billion people access the internet using a mobile or a smartphone. Most people are using smartphones nowadays. 57% of mobile users own a smartphone. So you can use it to watch videos, make recordings, send emails, take pictures, make phone calls and send text messages or other messages using apps. What exactly are text messages, SMS or MMS? So according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, a text message is a short message sent electronically, usually from one cell phone to another. So this PowerPoint is about sending basic text messages like that on the flip phone right here, not by the use of any app of any kind, that's a text message. They are also called SMS, which is the basic form of text messaging, a technology for sending short messages between mobile phones. Now an MMS is a multimedia message service. A uh, multimedia message service is more like a picture. You can send pictures with that or, you know, little emojis, um, little birthday greeting cards, pictures. That's what a MMS is. Now, what is the advantage of using SMS text messages? Well, the advantage is that the SMS text message comes built in with any phone, whether it's a flip top or a flip phone or a smartphone or a mobile phone. So you don't have to um, have internet service with this. The SMS does not use Wi-Fi. So instances where there's a power outage or a storm or you're in remote areas, you can still use SMS. SMS only use cell phone service. And SMS can be used even if there is no or low cell phone signal. So SMSs can be used or text messages can be used in areas where you cannot make a phone call. So if your phone doesn't work to make a call, you can always be sure to send an SMS. Now an MMS is a little bit harder to send out, but it's still better than a phone call. And individuals can make MMS and emojis um, to clarify messages. You don't need to download an extra app to send a message, and that saves extra phone storage. A lot of phones have limited storage in their phone, which makes the phone not function. So that is the advantage of SMS. And a lot of the younger, even older generation don't even know how to use a regular text message and are so dependent on apps. How is the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic affecting individuals? According to the CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, they highly recommend individuals to isolate by themselves or with just family members. Be six feet apart doing social distancing. No social gatherings other than those in the house. Children are mandated to stay at home and do school online. social
To June 2019, the KFF graphed 11% as being depressed or have anxiety. And then from uh, January 2021, you can see it significantly increased to 41%. Presently, due to the worrying over COVID-19 2020 pandemic, here's another slide. versus 32%. So the pandemic has greatly impacted our cause for anxiety and depression. Of course, with, with good reason, as we see on this slide. Here have more benefits of using text messages and as opposed to cell phone conversations or phone calls. Learning to text writing SMS is easy to master by anyone at any age. There are flat rate, unlimited, monthly cell phone rates that are affordable and already incorporated in a cell phone plan. Text messages, SMS, and MMS help conserve time because it's faster to write a text message. You can actually just do a voice assist and it will transcribe it into a written text message. A few text messages can replace a 30 minute conversation and that is only because only pertinent information is being texted. Phone conversations 
conversations can run around the bush and background noises can restore the conversation. Now, emojis can be incorporated to reassure the receiver that the message is sent in good faith. And MMS, which is pictures, can be sent to clarify the message. Now, you also have to understand that the message is always being sent with good intentions. So, those are the benefits of using text messages as opposed to the cell phone. Especially for businesses, you save more time reaching your patients and your clients. For this slide, you see that businesses prefer to use text messages over phone calls. First is the email, second voice, and third highest is the SMS, which is a text message. So it's the top three channel that consumers are engaging with businesses and they really prefer the SMS better. 80% of the text messages are over five minutes. Here we have a slide from ZipWeb where it shows the messaging tool, which is most preferred. And you can see here that text messaging are most preferred over others. 63% use regular text messaging as opposed to Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and other apps. So it's good to know that you can claim text messaging to communicate. So here you see a slide where they've done a research if more text messages are being sent during the pandemic. And you can see clearly that 50% are sending more text messages now that we have the pandemic. Here's a slide that I've incorporated just to show you that people, consumers, have been receiving text messages from businesses in 2020 and 83% said yes, they have been receiving text messages from businesses more so, and only 17% say no, they have not. On this slide, I want you to see that text messaging picks up the ball where social media drops. While social media advertising wanes, mobile marketing is stronger than ever. A 2015 global data-driven survey reported that the future of marketing is all about getting personal, which means that marketers should start trying to connect to consumers on the most intimate channel there is, text messaging. Text messaging with its 100% delivery rate, instantaneous reach, and ability to segment and target users is the perfect tool for marketers who are looking to take their company or product to the top. That comes from the read between the lines why text messaging is more valuable than social media. And on the left side we have the top ways US smartphone owners say they use their devices and that's from marketing charts. On the top percentage we have the messaging which is 70%. Phone calls for 62%, email for 54, social networking 51%, people use their phones for cameras for 37%, gaming 30%, music 28%, and directions or maps is 24%, uh, 23% use them for a clock or alarm clock, 23% for shopping, 22% use it for weather, 21% use it for banking, 11% use it for mobile TV, and 8% use it for mobile chat. Now, this is uh, from not really that recent, but it was from 2020, so it's pretty accurate as a statistics for us to see. So I added this slide because I read a research, a lengthy research um, about loneliness and aloneness not being the same. So the research was by Ortiz Ospina Roser. It's a research by written and made in 2020 and they were researching different aspects and different people all around the globe uh, about the pandemic and being alone and people living
living alone, but that they don't necessarily have to be lonely. So their research shows that social interaction is important for our social and psychological well-being. Dr. Vivek Murthy, a former Surgeon General of the United States, recently wrote, Loneliness and weak social connections are associated with a reduction in lifespan, similar to that caused by smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So it's interesting to note that loneliness can have the same effect as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, and we know that that causes or can cause cancer. So I'm wondering if that can cause cancer too, being lonely. But further on, they say loneliness describes a subjective feeling. This is conceptually distinct from objective physical isolation, says the same author. And further state both loneliness and solitude deserve attention, but it's important not to conflate them, not to interchange them. And individuals can be alone, yet not lonely. So there are certain individuals that really don't get lonely. And in their research, they actually showed that people are from richer countries, and they consider the United States a rich country, um, they are lonelier than those that are not from a rich country. So here, this is my conclusion. This is my slide with three different researchers with their conclusions and the first part is just a research done by a group of researchers and I'll try to say their names correctly Senayaki, Wickram Singhi, Chatfield, Hansen, Eddie Poolidge and Smith. In 2019 they did a nine RTCs which are randomized controlled trials uh, with 945 patients, 764 were adults, 181 were adolescents, and they were included in a systematic review. Five studies used text messaging as the only intervention, while the remaining combined text messaging with other treatments and modalities. And they further did more researchers with 845 patients, 664 were adults, and 181 were adolescents. Um, on the bottom, this is their conclusion that there is a marginal evidence supporting text messaging interventions as an effective treatment modality for people living with clinical depression. However, further research is needed to determine how best to utilize text messages interventions alongside with conventional forms of health service delivery. Now you got to understand this was done prior to the pandemic. And then um, there's another one that shows the promising and emergent efficacy of using mobile apps and SMS text messaging as health interventions. So there were other researchers that I had but they were not valid or weighty references because they didn't have names or they didn't have dates or they were just random blogs. But it shows there that you can use SMS and text to incorporate and strengthen and hone relationships as well as alleviate and uplift and get away from depression and anxiety and I think um, we're getting into a new normal where we can learn how to use anything and everything because we are a human being that is Stay safe, mask up.